So, tactical technician, diagnation, back at it again with a new tool, well, new to me, um, the Power Probe. I'm new to this tool. I just uh, got to give a shout out to a, a buddy of mine named Tim in California that I work for that turned me on to the Power Probe. I never used it a lot, or I ne actually, I never used it until one day he said, uh, why don't you use a Power Probe instead of your, your methodology when you're doing electrical troubleshooting? And I, um, I, I tried it out and then he sold it to me at a really good price. So thanks, Tim, for uh, expanding my diagnostic horizons. Anyway, this video is called Crank No Start Diagnosis with a Power Probe with Lab Scope Validation. We're basically going to be showing you two aspects of the Power Probe that aren't as popular as the way most people use it with the scope in the background that validates what the Power Probe can do. Now, if we were in an actual no start situation diagnosing the car with a Power Probe, we, would, we may not have a scope. A scope is an excellent tool also, but this is just a case to know what the power probe can do um, in a different ca capacity than, uh, than most people use it for. We're going to be looking at frequency. We're going to be looking at, in, in diagnosing a, a crank no start, big players are the crank sensor, obviously, and the injector. There are other aspects of, of diagnosing a crank no start, but for this video, I'm just going to concentrate on those two things. So basically the power probe hooked to the battery and I'll tell you how I set the power probe up when I get to the car. We're going to be scoping the injector during a crank no start. I have incapacitated the fuel pump and I will create the no start and we'll see what we look at on the power probe on the numbers and how, how the diagnostic advantage is to us. And then we'll go, I'll flip back to the scope to see, to make a comparator between the power probe and the scope so as we look at some really important numbers on, uh, on on the power probe uh, supply voltage ground spike voltage and and pulse width all critical things to look at when we're diagnosing a no start also the crank sensor we're going to be looking at the crank sensor too in a crank no start situation we're going to be looking at frequency which is hz on the power probe in both situations because those are both pulsing voltages uh, a crank uh, a crank i'm sorry okay the crank sensor has teeth on the reluctor wheel and as each each tooth passes the crank sensor that's a state of change that's when voltage changes and frequency is cycles per second so we're going to be looking at, at hertz on the power probe this 2004 uh, honda doesn't have that many teeth on the crank reluctor wheel as cars got newer they seem to increase the number of teeth so you look at a lot of them have 34 teeth they could accommodate 36 uh, some of them have a 58 tooth minus two or a, would, would accommodate 60 teeth. So they're more frequency. So the more teeth on the rotating component, the higher our frequency will be. So as we can learn different cars, we'll know what good is and what not good. If you work on a lot of BMWs and you get to the crank sensor, you'll know your, your good crank um, speed. If you work on a, you know, a Ford with 36 teeth, you know what that is. In this case, we're going to learn a good number and make a comparison between the power probe and the scope when we're uh, diagnosing. So I'm gonna shut the car off and I'm gonna incapacitate it. I'm gonna shut the fuel pump down and uh, let's go. It's gonna be a little rough, I don't edit. I'm kinda, let it go. Okay, okay, we'll be stalling pretty soon. I have the power probe hooked up on the car and we're running now. You can just take a look at these numbers, kinda learn them we have before we quit we got four numbers there we got a okay well that that's going to look different once we we get to the crank no start so i'm going to start with the injector first and i'll go to the crank sensor last okay here's our scope i'll be flip-flopping back between the scope and the power probe to talk about the numbers and when you look at when i, when I crank the car you're going to see certain numbers on here i don't know how to freeze the numbers but as you're watching this as i go ahead to the scope or maybe freeze the the video and just kind of take a snapshot of these numbers you'll see and i'll explain each one the scope is a different tool i can record on the scope and play it back but we're going to see how the numbers on the power probe and the numbers on the scope corroborate to give us uh, um, some information if we were diagnosing a no start so here we go i'm going to crank we're going to crank no start right here and we're looking at uh looking at the power probe look at those numbers okay okay now we're over here on the scope we did record in the background and i'll play this back and then we'll go talk about the uh the situation 
Okay, let me zoom in on the uh, on the scut on the on the injector. Okay, hang on one second. I've got to put this thing down. Oh, I got a mouse. My, I want more. Come on, man. I got a mouse. I'm lucky. Okay, so that's our injector pattern. That's our cranking injector pattern. As you saw those uh, those four numbers on the power probe, and recorded them or took a screenshot. I don't I don't know them exactly, but as you, if you look at those power probe numbers first, I will tell you that we'll pretty much be. I'll give you those numbers by reading what I'm seeing on here on the on the scope. The first one is supply voltage, which is down here. That looks like it's about. Okay, 10.54 volts. We're not going to be dead nuts to the tenth of a number. Just it would be very close. So that's our supply voltage. That tells us we got a good feed to the injector, which can come from a relay, an ignition switch, a PCM control relay. So that does have a piece of diagnostic advantage there if we were diagnosing a no start. Second number on the on, you know, power probe is the lowest number. That's the voltage drop or the ground right here. That's going to be very low. That right there is about what am I doing there? About 70 millivolts. That's very low. That means we got good, we got a normal amount of voltage drop going from the injector into the PCM, into the driver, coming out of the PCM to the ground on the engine block, the ECM ground, back to the negative side of the battery. That tells us a whole heck of a lot about our situation. So that number's got to remain low. It doesn't want to elevate. That would tell us we have a ground issue. Okay. The third number is the highest voltage. That's the peak. I can't call it. Um, a, a, a spike voltage or a flyback voltage that's pretty high i'm seeing about let me get the cursor right here my cursor here that's about okay i'm seeing about almost 49 um, i may be clipped i'm probably clipped because i didn't use the right voltage range okay nonetheless um you probably whatever you saw on the power probe maybe a little higher than 50 because i'm clipped but anyway nonetheless that's a good flyback voltage and that tells us we got a good dynamic injector with current flowing so let me go the final one is pulse width and that's super critical because that's the on time of the injector and that's a lot of things are contingent upon that effect that most likely temperature um a battery voltage things like that but we can't have too little of pulse width because uh, if we get a no start, we can't have too much pulse with, then we also get a no start, we have a flooded engine. So you'll learn your good numbers as you go along. Um, you want to test some known good vehicles, and you'll get a good number. Um, by the way, what is that in milliseconds? That is 12 point, 12 point, uh, about 12.29 milliseconds. So this car's fairly hot. Um, if you were stone cold um, in the morning, in a winter morning, you'd be a lot longer than that. And so that's just something to bear in mind. So I'm going to go to the injector. I mean, I'm sorry, the crank sensor next. We're going to look at frequency. So let me change some things on here. Let me go down to about 10 volts per division. I'll start the scope. I will get back to the power probe. And we're going to change the dials on the power probe to hertz. So we go into mode. We were in the, in the fuel injector part of the menu. I'll kind of show you the menu here. And we go to menu, we go to here, and we can just kind of scroll down. We got fuel injector, we got uh, peak to peak, we got a driver test, we got regular, regular voltage, which most people use. We got a feed test. Well, I'm going to come back with another video. That's a way to, um, to almost load a circuit. If there was a voltage drop on the way to a fuel pump or an injector, that's root mean square AC, that's AC voltage, that's peak to peak. And this is the one we're going to use. This is for the crank sensor because the crank sensor will be emitting frequency so when i go to there i'm going to hit uh, i'm going to set us up now now we're reading hertz now let me get the power probe over to the crank sensor so we got a bear with me okay nice day in dublin okay on to the crank sensor and we'll get our channel hooked up all right working one-handed don't have a tripod i tried but maybe next time okay now we're hooked into the crank sensor with the scope and the power probe and we're going to crank it looking at our our frequency we're going to see that we're going to see the similarity between our scope and our power probe so here we go we'll take a look at the uh the cranking frequency right here Get that number in your brain, 53, 45, 47, 45, 45, there you go. Now we go over to here, 
and I'm going to get on the scope and I'm going to set a measurement up because in the background we were uh, we were we were scoping everything right there I'm going to set a, a measurement up remember that number you saw on the power probe add measurement I go to uh, channel A blue which I'm on I go to frequency and then I go I want between the lines between rulers I go okay and let me see what I got here oh, I got I, I got the mouse why am I keep forgetting that that's crazy okay which is we should get okay right on there we go 4577 so we, we're definitely close between our power probe what we saw on the scope so those are just two situations where we're diagnosing a nose star with a power probe and we usually don't use it uh in this capacity you know it's the voltage checks the ground checks super important but it just adds another to the, to the tool um I'm, I'm liking this tool and um i got some more videos coming up where i'll use it in different menus i showed you on the uh on the power probe thanks very much for watching